Hello students, I am Talika Banerjee. Today I bring you the next learning episode in BSc Forensic Science on an important unit of paper, Forensic Psychology, that is Psychosocial Factors of Crime. Dear students, in the introductory module, we will first discuss about crime and the factors by which delinquent behavior is caused. After you have acquainted yourself with the definition of crime and its causing factors, you will get to know about the psychological factors resulting in criminal behavior and the social factors resulting in criminal behavior. You will also be told about how psychosocial factors result in criminal behavior whereby you will get to know that both the social as well as the psychological factors leads to causation of the criminal behavior. We will wind up this lecture with a conclusion. So dear students, let us have a look at the modules which we are going to learn today. Module 1 is regarding introduction. Module 2 is regarding the psychological factors resulting in criminal behavior. Module 3 is regarding social factors resulting in criminal behavior. Module 4 is regarding psychosocial factors resulting in criminal behavior. And module 5 is regarding the conclusion. So Crime is a particularly an interesting problem because it is in many respects the obverse or the flip side of altruism. This statement is exclusively true when we describe crime in terms of behavior wherein individuals obtain resources from others via force, fraud or stealth. Acts of altruism cost a person more than what he or she gains. Criminal acts do just the opposite. Individuals committing such acts intentionally will harm others for their own gain or benefit. At times, to execute the strategies of crime and criminality against the larger societies, altruism is needed in a small scale. The part of gang members who are caught, the criminal conspiracies, set by them may order considerable self-sacrifice. In legal terms, crime is generally defined as the acts or omissions prohibited by law and which can be punished by fine or and by imprisonment. Some common examples include child neglect, child abuse, sexual assault, robbery, murder, etc. Nevertheless, some prominent criminologists have recently noted example by Samson and Lobb in the year 1993, Gottfriedson and Hirschi in the year 1990, that the crucial factor in understanding crime is to concentrate on the fundamental attributes of all the criminal behaviors rather than on the particular acts of criminal. There are various theories about what causes crime such as choice theory, biological theories, psychological theories, sociological theories, conflict theories, integrated theories and the victimization theories. The psychological factors are the result of interactions between the biological and the socio-cultural factors. Criminal behavior is the product of a systematic process that involves complex interactions between the individuals, societal and ecological factors over the course of our lives. In other words, from conception onward, the intellectual, emotional and the physical attributes we develop are strongly influenced by our personal behaviors and the physical processes, interactions with the physical environment and interactions with other people, groups and institutions. These systematic processes affect the transmission from generation to generation of traits associated with increased involvement in crime. Dear students, in this lecture we will be studying about the psychosocial factors affecting criminal behavior. These psychosocial factors are the amalgamation of the psychological and the social factors which result in criminal behavior. 
So keeping in mind, we will first emphasize on the psychological factors followed subsequently by the social factors. The main crux of this lecture that is psychosocial factors will be dealt after taking up the social factors. According to psychological theories of crime, the difference in individuals thinking process results in criminal behavior. There are various psychological theories, but according to all the theories, a person's or an individual's actions are the reflection of his or her thoughts and the feelings. So the problems in thinking can lead to criminal behavior. There are various psychological factors which affect the criminal behavior of a person. We will be discussing them one by one. The very first one factor is the parental relations. In 1980s, Cleckley's ideas on sociopathy were adopted to describe the pattern of violence found in family histories or a cycle of violence. A cycle of violence means that if a person grows up in an environment with abuse and antisocial behavior, then he or she will often follow the same pattern with his or her children. Neglected or abused children are more likely to commit crimes in their later life as compared to others. Sometimes being a victim of sexual abuse in childhood often lead these victims to become sexual predators as adults. Many people on death row have childhood with some type of severe abuse. The cycle of violence and crime keeps repeating itself. This concept of cycle of violence has a positive counterpart. Sometimes Children who have been in an antisocial environment may have supportive and loving parents who fulfill their child's basic needs and inculcate self-confidence in them as well as interest in the social environments. These children get adjusted in society easily and are less likely to commit crimes. The second psychological factor is the heredity and brain activity. Studies on antisocial personality disorders and their influence over crime in twins and adopted children were conducted in 1980s. Identical twins have exactly the same genetic makeup. It has been observed that similar criminal behavior is almost twice in identical twins as compared to fraternal twins. Fraternal twins have similar genes but not identical, similar to any other two siblings. Some researchers indicated that adopted children had greater similarities of crime rates to their biological parents than to their adoptive parents. The genetic basis for criminal behavior can be established from these researches. A psychologist, Robert Hare in the year 1986, identified a connection between the brain activity and the criminal behavior. According to his observations, criminals had less brain reaction to dangerous situations than most of the people. Such brain functions make criminals stubborn and do not fear of any punishment as compared to others. With advanced technology like CT scans, MRI, etc., connection between the brain activity and, te and tendency to commit crime can be tested. Various neurochemicals play an important role in influencing the criminal behavior. Neurochemicals are substances released by brain to trigger various body activities and hormones. According to previous studies, it has been observed that increase in level of neurochemical serotonin decreases the aggression and higher level of dopamine, another neurochemical produced by brain, results in increased aggression. It was observed that people who commit violent crimes have low levels of serotonin and higher level of dopamine. 
The third factor over here is the hormones. Substances produced inside the body which affects the functioning of body organs are known as hormones. Relationships between some hormones like testosterone and cortisol and criminal behavior have been studied by researchers. Development of masculine body traits is carried out by sex hormones secreted by the male sex organs. Processing of food by digestion is affected by cortisol produced by the adrenaline glands located next to kidneys. The level of cortisol gets high in the body leading to more supply of glucose to the brain for greater energy in situations like danger or stress. Aggression and high level of testosterone are strongly linked. Increased level of testosterone can lead to higher chances of criminal behavior. Cortisol can also be linked to criminal behavior. Physical activeness and sharp attention is observed in people with high levels of cortisol whereas short attention spans and lowers activity levels were seen in people with low level of cortisol. These low levels of cortisol are often linked with the antisocial behavior including crime. According to previous studies, it has been observed that low levels of cortisol were present in violent criminals. Low level of this hormone numbs an offender to the usual fear which is associated with committing a crime and getting caught. The fourth factor is the peer influence. The company a man keeps strongly affect and influence the thinking of that person. A decision to commit crime is highly influenced by a person's peer group. Those young girls and boys who do not fit the expected standards in academics or sports or social programs can sometimes become lost in the competition. Children from families who cannot afford adequate clothing or school supplies can also tend towards crime. These youth may also leave their schoolmates and join an anti-social gang to earn respect and street credibility in different manner. These criminal gangs are mainly focused on material gain. Theft, fraud, extortion are some of the methods undertaken by these gangs to achieve it. There exist a few basic social factors in crime which are important in understanding of its causes. The very first factor are the personal factors. Factors that influence the offending more likely comprise of age, gender, low intelligence, aggression, lack of empathy and restlessness. Other factors that are more obvious during the early days of life or in babyhood and teenage years include aggressive or hostile behavior, language impairment or delay in language, emotional instability or lack of emotional control that is learning to control one's anger and cruelty to animals. Among all, gender is the strongest predictors of crime, particularly violent crime. Crime committed by men and boys are significantly more, both serious and not, than women and girls. According to many studies and crime cases, lots of evidence can be seen that can suggest that males are generally more aggressive than females, even before the preschool years. Generally, connection with crime typically rises from late adolescence reaching a peak in the late teenage years and then begins to decline. In addition, an increase of emotional problems during adolescence is related to delinquency. Low self-control and social factors including coercive parental practices, disturbed social relations, misconduct due to lawlessness, school underachievement, frustration due to stress from school study and bad school experience, stressful life events and negative relationships with peers are significantly related to juvenile delinquency. 
Impulsivity is another factor strongly related to commission of crimes by youths. Adolescents exhibiting poor mental inhibitory control and impulsivity are more likely to exhibit the antisocial behavior and delinquency at a young age. High rates of impulsivity are related to antisocial behavior. The next factor is the family factor. Poor parental guidance and domestic violence are considered as major factors that give rise to criminal behavior in children and those children who come from such homes are believed to be at a greater risk or are more likely to commit offenses than children who do not. All individuals may not be able to live in normal families and experience socializing interpersonal relationships. Identifying factors such as lack of control, too strict or too lenient discipline, parental neglect or rejection, physical abuse and broken homes appear to corroborate much of the popular but wise notion that family influences in general and parents erratic disciplining of children in particular had an influence on subsequent criminality. The next factor is the poverty. Poverty has its wide impact on crime. In the poor community, there is higher chance of finding people who are suffering from mental illness due to higher level of frustration occurring because of financial problem. Sometimes poverty becomes a single reason that gives rise to many crimes because of frustration. Stress for survival and helplessness leads individuals to commit crime such as robbery, theft or other violent acts. The next factor over here is the education. According to Merton's earlier sociological theories, a survey was conducted among inmates of state prisons in 1990s which showed that most of them were less educated. Many of them could not read or write above the basic elementary school levels. Robbery, burglary, shoplifting, drug trafficking and automobile theft are the most common crimes committed by such people. Due to low education levels, they were not able to earn well. Most of the time they were offered low wage jobs with frequent periods of unemployment. Criminal activity cannot be reduced by employment with minimum wage or low salary. Even with government provided amenities, lower salary does not provide the basic needs. Such people make choice between the continued long term low income job and the profitable crime. Getting further education can improve the condition but it can be expensive and time consuming. Chance of getting a better job is increased with higher education, but it does not overcome the effects of abuse, poverty or other factors. The next factor after education is the employment, is the unemployment. One fundamental belief is that while being in a phase of unemployment, in an attempt of maintaining a certain standard of living, an individual preferably tends to commit a criminal act. Ample amount of factors such as income, the chance to turn into a socially valued member of a community, to widen networks of support and to develop knowledge and self-esteem have been provided by the employment. Criminal record of many people act as an automatic barrier in terms of searching job as employers routinely check criminal record and reject any interviewee with records of conviction. Only job is not the significant factor. Stability and quality of employment are also the materialized factors. Measurement of quality of employment can be done in several ways, counting a skill level requirement, adequacy of salary, job satisfaction reported by the worker, working conditions and time. Low paying jobs that require less skill tends to have the least potential for upward mobility 
and personal satisfaction. In this way, jobs of poor class or underemployment may act as important a criminogenic factor as unemployment. Next is inequality. We cannot act in response to crime without knowing that what actually causes crime. While it is assumed by many persons that poverty is a main factor, but it is shown by studies that income inequality is the actual factor. The gap between a country's richest and poorest income earners has a larger influence on the crime rates. Countries that have higher income gaps have lesser levels of societal faith and elevated crime rates including the violent crime. Income inequality affects health, education, housing, the whole neighborhood blocks and the services they receive. And now we know that in response to crime, imprisonment additionally affects social mobility and income inequality not for offenders only but also for their children increasing the prospects for more crime. The next factors are drugs and alcohol. Various social factors strongly influence a person's choice to make choices. One of such factors is drugs and alcohol. People start committing crime to support their drug habit. This drug habit impairs their potential of decision making. Both alcohol and drug affects judgment and reduces inhibitions and gives the offender greater courage to commit a crime. Substance abuse triggers stranger violence. Stranger violence is a crime committed by a person in which the victim has no relationship with the attacker. Alcohol is one such substance which triggers this. Such cases can occur at public places where attacker and victim can be at the same time. According to previous researches, it has been revealed that 30 to 50 percent of violent crime like murder, sexual assault, etc. were committed by person who consumed alcohol or used drugs. Influence of drugs or alcohol even make victim more prone to such criminal attacks because of being less attentive or visiting a secluded area to purchase drugs. Various rehabilitation centers are present for the treatment of addicts as alcohol or drug abuse affects a person's life adversely. Treatments in rehabilitation centers focus on positive support to influence a person's future decision making and to reduce the tendency for antisocial and criminal behavior. Next factor is the movies. A copycat crime is a criminal act that is modeled or inspired by a previous crime that has been reported in media or described in fiction. Due to the increase of replicated crimes, criminologists suspect that media coverage plays a role in inspiring other people to commit crimes in a similar fashion. Various criminal acts have been inspired by many television shows, movies, books as well as the other criminals. Neighborhood Neighborhoods become crime prone when a large number of residents or visitors independently engage in crime. Sometimes however, the crime problems of an area are magnified by the emergence of gangs or other kinds of criminal groupings and organizations. The existence of a strong illegal markets for sex and stolen goods probably also plays a role. The factors which influence the creation of gangs may nevertheless not be entirely monetary. It has been suggested by some that the economic and social marginalization tempts young people to form gangs as a means of conferring social status on them unobtainable from conventional society. Whatever the origin of gangs and other forms of organized crime, the crime problems they generate are often qualitatively distinct from those generated by neighborhoods which simply have a large number of individuals 
more or less independently involved in crime. Competition for control of illicit drug markets, for example, can result in violence, intimidation, extortion, money laundering and official corruption. Organized gangs may come to completely dominate the drug production or distribution and sometimes involve themselves in other large scale criminal enterprises such as fraud. Although numerous theories take into account the psychological or social factors underlying the mechanism for criminal behavior, the main crux can only be derived by understanding the combined effect of these factors on a particular person or an individual. According to Glenn Walters who proposed the lifestyle theory stated that criminal behavior is a choice conditioned by the interaction of individual traits and environmental circumstances. The choices that an individual makes are made within the boundaries of one's environmental and biological conditions which eventually lead to the development of cognitions. Lifestyle criminals are characterized by irresponsibility, impulsiveness, self-indulgence, negative interpersonal relationships and the chronic willingness to violate society's rules. As stated in Psychosocial Theories, Individual Traits and Criminal Behavior, 2006. Moreover, the most important to be noted here is that behind the causing of criminal behavior, both the psychological and the social factors together play an important role. It has been seen that neglected and abused child tends to connect with the delinquent attitudes as compared with the child who has been well taken care of by his parents during his growing years. The delinquent behavior from childhood leads to development of criminalistic tendencies in the adult age because of lack of proper education, peer influence and pressure, influence of drugs and alcohol, not getting proper unemployment, poverty etc. It can be well said that both the role of psychological and social factors are interrelated to each other in causing the delinquent and the criminalistic behavior and no one such factor can be surely pointed towards the creation of such types of behavior. In legal terms, crime is generally defined as the acts or omissions prohibited by law and which can be punished by fine and or the imprisonment. There are various theories about what causes crimes such as choice theory, biological theories, psychological theories, sociological theories, conflict theories, integrated theories and the victimization theories. The most important to be noted here is that behind the causing of criminal behavior, both the psychological and the social factors together play an important role. Dear students, this is the end of our conclusion module in which we have recapitulated our chapter about psychosocial factors of crime. I hope you all have enjoyed this lecture. I hope you all have understood the underlying concepts of this chapter. Do keep in mind what we discussed today. I will be back with one more lecture in the series. If you want to learn more and enhance your knowledge, you may log on to our website www.cec.nic.in for MCQ, quizzes, LORs, etc. Make sure you revise the modules frequently so that you master the topic well and take up the exercises. Thank you for your time today. I will see you in the next lecture. Keep learning and goodbye. Sorry.